I, I'm still trying to figure out if this is real life or not. Like, am I about to wake up from a dream and be like, Carrie, I had this amazing dream where I got to play with the new Airy Alexa with the new sensor. We've been waiting for a new sensor out of an Airy Alexa since the original one, which came out 11 years ago. And Carrie would look at me and be like, I don't care. Go back to sleep. A majority of today's Oscar winning films is shot on a over 10 year old sensor. This has for the most part been unchanged. They have made variations in sizes. Take two, put it together and you have an LF. You put three together, you have a Lexus 65 IMAX. Now you might be thinking like, oh, what are the specs on it? Does it do 15K, 600 frames per second? No, Aerie has actually never pursued specs in the past. The image you get out of a Alexa, it's not about the resolution resolution it is about how f great it looks <laughs> sorry i got too excited there You guys know it's not safe to play with fire. We're professionals. Oh, no, no, we're professionals. <laughs> Somebody gave us money once. That's the definition of professional, right? <laughs> yeah. How did you not just burn? It was getting hot. <laughs> Dude, I'm covered in water that, before that, I start and it's evaporated like that. <laughs> that, was, that looks so hot. I could see all the details in the flames, which is very unusual. There's a lot of contrast, but there's still that detail just sits right there. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, look at the like detail in the great... fire. It looks amazing. It's brighter than regular fire, isn't it? Yeah, it's like got titanium spark? powder on it oh. to add the sparkles. It's it's one of the hardest things in the world to right. shoot. Right. For the fire to have the right effect, it has to be fairly dark. He's well exposed. We're not losing any of the fire. Nothing's clipping out. For Airy to depart from that sensor and that technology, I mean, obviously the industry has demanded it, but it's a big, big deal for Airy in a much bigger way than I think a lot of people really understand. First thought. No more carbon fiber. We have a display on the side, which is super cool. We have 4.6K open gate, 4K 16.9. So Netflix productions. All perfect. of them exceed. So at our open gate, we're 4608 by 3164, which is like absolutely fantastic. So our minimum deliverable for Netflix, 3840 by 2160. I like too that maybe Aerie hasn't chased the, the sort of resolution dragon. Right. You know, 8K I think is just unnecessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. But okay, so let's look at memory cards. This is the price of uh, a small car right here. So <laughs> you're not buying this camera to save money. That's no, for sure. Well, I mean, is there any area you're buying to save money? Do you know the price point? The price point of this camera will be around seventy-eight thousand dollars. So what have you been shooting what these an days? Upgrade. I don't think we've seen each other for at least a few years now. I know, so right? I've been filming a lot with the competitor uh, because of the features. Competitor as in Sony? As in Sony, yeah. I've been shooting a lot with the Venice for this most of my projects. How, how much do you love the Venice compared to the, the Airy? There's wow. a guy behind with a knife. <laughs> so you got a jog wheel here now. So And that's something that I always wanted to have on the Alexa Mini. Um, Sometimes you're on a steady can and you want to just unplug the viewfinder and you have this and you just go here. And I love the color science. I love everything, uh, you know, from Airy. But the limitations of like the delivery and in 4K and, and, and the mini being a 3.2K. It's pretty exciting that now we can actually, you know, produce the work that we've been producing to Netflix, to all these companies with the Alexa. That's a pretty big smile right there. This is pretty sexy. Biggest thing that caught me off guard is the way it handles color gamuts in the extreme range. So with the out of gamut errors that you sometimes get with intense flares where the color peaks outside of the way the camera can record it, having that extra latitude, not only in exposure, but also in color range, gonna make the lenses look more neutral, subtle, and natural. It's not clipping weird, it's not doing anything and that's a very, very blue light. Right? This is your so Kylo Ren flare. <laughs> I don't think other manufacturers are trying to tackle capturing so much color gamut in addition to dynamic range because everybody talks about dynamic range, but few people talk about color gamut as much. It's bigger than I expected and heavier than I expected, which is my negative takeaway, but my positive takeaway is I can see what we got for that extra size. So we have the Alexa on the gimbal and it's gonna look awesome. I'm just. I don't know how I'm gonna carry this thing. It's so heavy. Coming to a theater near you. One man, <laughs> two poles. <laughs> Are you my savior? 
Do you need a rig? <laughs> I just need to carry this thing. Here, give it to me. Get in the rig! <laughs> no! Dude, honestly, I think this is gonna be how I introduce you. The founder of Ready Rig. I am, I am. I'm going to now give you okay. the power. It's getting nice and sweaty. It's been prepared. <laughs> it's already been worked it's, in. It's just, uh, pretty warm is, in uh, here, so a, you can see like how shiny we all are in here. Yeah, we're glistening vampires. <laughs> AC is gonna get installed in this place like next yeah. week, so Until of course then it's, a, it's a Swedish we sauna. Come, yeah. <laughs> so with this, I can carry this gimbal and cat. It's a 40-pound package. 40-pound package over here. We would not be able to get a single shot with this. I could get one shot. A one or. 15 minute one. Oh no. <laughs> no! You said one shot, I didn't say how long. We're running the battery off of here because this is a 24 volt requirement, but people are custom making these cables right here that come out and supply the camera. So if we had that cable, we would be dealing with like 36 pounds instead, which would be great. But <laughs> every pound does count. It does. At, at yeah. this weight range, it, it really does translate. You know, you should also sell this as like a workout machine. One, it's a baby two, holder. One. Yo, don't, don't do that, don't do oh that. Oh my do gosh. That. No, no, Until no. they're 40 pounds. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Are Liability you? Liability. Are you? Children. <laughs> Another shirtless man has entered the uh, building. Oh, okay. It's too hot to be wearing clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Is my hair insured with fire? That's yeah. I'm good. <laughs> but you should be doing this. I've never seen that before. I get congested sometimes. You know, <laughs> like, you gotta clear yeah, off the yeah. The detail in the fire is just unreal. We always have to underexpose and we lose the performer, and this just has everything. You're pretty good at fire breathing. Best in the world. I'm so also very modest as well. <laughs> now let's look at this piece okay. of sh I'm just kidding. Hey, it's hey, still hey, a beautiful we're, camera. We're, we're losing all the fire. Still looks uh, gorgeous. Yeah, but I mean, it's, we're, it's just like we're white it. in yeah. the fire. Having it blow out does look good. It looks very natural, which is cool. Yeah, so then cool. that's an option. Let your colorist <laughs> do that, not your camera. <laughs> the Ronin 2, I like it. It's strong. The motors feels good. Like the locking axis is great, but it's heavier than the Movi Pro it is, for sure. It's way heavier. But the Movi Pro would not be able to handle this. Yeah, yeah no, this, not a chance. I have the perfect accessory for you. So, uh, yeah. Oh my, my gosh. You have to get there super early. I got royalties it's, on V2. Can I have a kombucha? But it's cool jumping out here. I got a quick draw too. Right, right. Yeah. Let's see, two seconds. I started, I mean, I started civilian jumping. Back in, get in the shot. Go, go, get in there. So I'm gonna be given a couple of these mini lessons throughout because to completely understand this camera, you have to understand a certain level of technical shit. Technical shit, let's do it. We are being lit by a really bright light. You can actually see how bright it is if I open up the exposure to expose for the background right there, right? So we are pretty much blown out right now. Well, you, you can't but the show background our unfinished is... kitchen. Okay, so we got a couple of comments on like, why is the kitchen like that? We've been renovating the house and we kind of ran out of budget halfway <laughs> through. Okay, apparently it's common. Okay, this happens all the time. Now, the bigger the dynamic range is, the more we can capture in one frame. You're so backlit. Or if I expose for you, you get a blown out background. There's no perfect medium. If only we had more. A dynamic range? Yeah, <laughs> you get an A plus. Right now, we're filming on the Alexa Classic. That is 14 and a half stops of dynamic range. A lot of other companies will try to blast the spec sheet so it's like, hey, we have more. They're doing a lot of highlight recovery mm -hmm. to get that. It would still be exposed, but it would be really flat. It sounds like Aries more, a little more conservative. Yes, exactly. We are sadly very honest. <laughs> we now get 17. Sheesh. That's butter at the top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I coined that, butter at the top. Butter at the top? You can use it. And what's the dynamic range on this? The light. 17 stops. Whew. Yeah. Getting warm here. <laughs> <laughs> Take my credit card. <laughs> 17. That doesn't seem like that much more. It's, it's two and a half stops more. It's quite a bit more. Okay. Here's the thing you have to understand about stops. So every time you go up a stop, it's double the amount of light. It gets exponentially mm. greater. And that's the point where you can really start making stuff look like film, the way film did. Because film strength was in highlights. Video's strength has always been in shadows. It sees into shadows better than film can. But that really beautiful filmic roll-off was the holy grail for a long time. And as a DP, when I saw the Alexa Classic for the first time, that was what really got my attention because I like to be able to do things I, I used to do in film where I just smack a light in a room 
it comes screaming through the curtains, it bounces off the floor, it fills the room with light, and I can shoot everything in the space using just that light and see the window in the shot at the same time. And video cameras at the time just couldn't do that, and the Alexa Classic could. In 12 years, we still are the leaders when it comes to dynamic range, but now we've got even more. And then for HDR, it just means that if you go back and remaster this in 10 or 15 years, you're gonna have plenty of detail for whatever crazy displays are, are in existence at that time. There's a lot of new features in here, but do you guys have a favorite feature? My favorite feature has to do with the choice of textures available in the camera to really carve the look that is most appropriate for the story that you're trying to tell. The textures feature was something that it took me a minute to wrap my head around. Think of it as uh, you're customizing a film stock that you're shooting on and you're controlling the amount of grain in the film stock, uh, how it responds to color and shadows, how sharp or soft it, it might be. That's cool to have another tool set in the palette. I was just surprised to hear that it gets baked into even the raw. That's, that's, that's interesting because it's happening prior to raw. That, that, that's. Yeah, so it must be very right early on. There. That's what makes me think it's a demosaic thing with the sensor, so it might be happening on the sensor and then digital signal processing level between the sensor and the DSP. I didn't understand about half the words you just said. <laughs> it actually gets baked into even the raw, right? So it's actually something that's happening way early on. At a very deep level before the debear even happens. The textures are, for the most part, pretty subtle. So it's a good idea to evaluate them on a big monitor and get a sense of what they're doing because through a viewfinder or a small onset monitor, you're probably not gonna get a good sense of what's going on. So you have to pay attention because you're just not always going to be able to see it. So if someone finds the textures to be overwhelming, then they could just go and just put it on default and then it's just like shooting on all the other cameras. Yeah, default is always safe. Every Airy camera has a default. We just didn't tell you about it before. And the reason was because we made the choice of how we want to tune the camera to render detail and contrast in the most pleasing way in the, the most flexible way possible. But this camera has such a powerful processor that we are now able to give you a number of presets that we've developed that we think people will like. And when in doubt, go with default. But if you can evaluate them in advance and get a sense of what they're doing, use them like a filter, I think they're very powerful. There's a lot of subtle things you do in lighting and composition and exposure, and they all add together to create one whole image. And this is just one part of it. I think Nostalgic's the most noticeable even on a smaller screen. It is. You see quite a bit more of that grain, but it looks great. Nostalgic is fun, the deep shadow is really nice. Pulls color out of the noise. And that's one of the things that gives away video noise as being video noise is that you see a lot of speckly color and stuff going around. But the more color you pull out of that at the very bottom of the curve, the more it looks like film grain. It looks very cinematic. Clarity and high clarity are kind of interesting because they increase the micro contrast in fine details. So if you're shooting landscapes, everything just kind of snaps a little bit more. It's not an artificial snap. It just feels like you're at the optometrist's office and they say, do you like number one or number two? Cosmetic is really nice on faces. And also you'll notice at the beginning of each name here, there's a letter with a series of numbers. First letter that we use in the naming convention of texture has to do with the type of grain, then the amount of grain, the contrast in the fine image structures, the contrast over the coarse image structure. You'll be able to get a good sense of what's going on just by looking at those letters and numbers at the beginning of the name. By the way, this video is sponsored by the subscribe button. You know how hard it is to try to brag to people and have to say almost in front of a million subscribers? I have almost a million subscribers. Get me there, please. Thank you very much. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick tour of the camera. So this is the viewfinder. It's the MVF2, so the same viewfinder in the Mini LF, but big upgrade from the Alexa Mini's viewfinder. Big part of it is this cable. You don't have to worry about which direction it goes in. It just plugs in, feeds it power, camera control, as well as picture, all in one cable. So love that. And if we turn it around, there's another viewfinder port back here. Now this is Aries cage, so mounting spots all over the place. This actually flips up and slides around, which is nice. Now it looks like a little flying Pokemon. Condor Boost quick release on here, so I can go ahead and lock that in and I can slide this up, down, out the way to access some of these ports. So there is an SDI here and a second SDI here, synced in the middle. 6G and 12G 
forecast yeah out. Tasty, I think we're ready for the new world. So right here we have a run stop, which is a three pin fisher. So I can go ahead, plug this in. We use that to power the nucleus. So I use the nucleus as my fizz unit. I mean, it works. It's the poor man's WCU4. I also have a two pin fisher. I usually use that to send power over to my Terra deck. What's nice about this flap is when you close it down here, it kind of protects some of the cables and ports. Back here is where our codex cards go. And if we want to power up, button right there and let's go ahead and boot this thing up now we have our basic controls right here as well as playback and we could also format card all that good stuff big record button right here on body and six custom buttons that we can program into whatever i have them set for nd up and down and also different exposure tools on either the viewfinder or a monitor so that's cool with the mini we only had three but now we have up to nine so three more on the right hand now just like before you can pull out these four screws swap out this entire mount this is an lpl out, but I don't have those fancy signature primes, so I adapted. So now I can go ahead and attach my PL lenses. What's cool about this dovetail is that you can slide it back and forth, but there's this little lever I can pull. And I can also pull off the top. Shoulder pad right here, so you can do some handheld work. You got rosettes here to attach your handles, and then you get to just slap it right back on from the top, lock it into place. And it's so much easier than trying to slide it in from the back. You got your focus motors and all this stuff bumping into the duct. Like, this is great. This top handle is amazing too, because it's just one screw back here and the whole thing comes off just like that. And this is how we ran it on a gimbal. And what's cool about the back here is that it's modular. So this one has a bunch of three pins and two pins. So if you want to power a bunch of accessories and monitors, you could run it all off of the camera. There's also going to be another option for the back plate, which gives you phantom powered input. So you can use this as a documentary style camera, kind of like the Mira, thank you. That's gonna be awesome for documentary style shoots or even solo shoots. So I got tilted nucleus for focus and zoom. I can control that with my grip right here. And this thing I'm wearing is called an ergo rig supporting the weight here. I can drop it down lower, get my low shots. But today we're filming Isaiah who is very tall. So I have to probably be up here for most of it. Now the Alexa is much more of a cinema camera than a documentary style camera. But having that dynamic range in that sensor is insanely useful because you never really know where you're gonna end up with documentary style shoots and just capture what's there. And in post, you have so much control over the saturation, the contrast, where you wanna put the contrast and all that good stuff. We do also have built in microphones up front as a scratch track as well because sometimes that's all you need so you can sync it with other stuff. Trying to make it a lot easier for people to use these cameras for any purpose. You know, they're not just for feature films and TV shows. They're for documentaries and cooking shows and corporate and everything. So we want to take uh, precious care of these beautiful creatures. But Alexis has always been pretty durable for the most part, right? So opening up here, do we need to be worried about rain or let's say beer being spilled on it? No! <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was close. <laughs> you could pour a beer in here and the, you might do something to the fan, but nothing else is gonna, there's, you can't Are you get telling that. every Alexa owner to pour, pour beer on the- Absolutely. <laughs> we have a picture somewhere of a completely dust caked camera. It was some TV series that we were shooting oh. out in the desert. Do you remember which one that was? It's uh, Blue Grand Tour. Blue Grand Tour, yeah, yeah. You know, they would take some canned air at the end of every day. They'd, stick it in the top and blow all the dust out the bottom <laughs> yeah. and, you're, and you're done. And that's that's really the most cleaning you need to do because that dust is never gonna get to the electronics. Temperature range. A lot of cameras are minus 10 to 40, but minus 20 to plus 45. And there is no need to black balance because we wanted to get that out of the way. So you could just pick it up and run around and not have to worry about that. And in case you're not familiar, there's a lot of cameras where every time you travel, change humidity, change temperatures, you should run it through a black balance. It takes time to do also. Yeah, <laughs> it just takes care of it for you. That's, yeah, that's, that's just what we do. That's we great. Take care of it. Thank you. I do want to one day borrow this. Downstairs we have the film scanner and the film recorder so you can record your digital file. Oh, really? Yes. Where did you get this? I must have one. Check out line at Ross dress for less. <laughs> We're going to try out some of the slow-mo settings at open gate raw. We have up to 75 frames per second or 4K 16 by 9 at 120 mm -hmm. frames per second. So we should be able to get really clean 120. The, the original mini was 30 frames a second. Yeah. In open gate 3.4K open gate. ProRes 16.9 2K, and only in ProRes though. Yeah. At 200 frames a second. So right now we're about to shoot 120 frames per second in 4K, and we're about to fill up a two terabyte hard drive in 17 minutes. I mean, I remember back in the day we'd shoot like a thousand frames a second on a Mitchell, and it would speed up. We would get speed for three seconds and then we'd run out of film. 
and then that would that's just cost it. you that's a it. fortune. Yeah, 400 feet of film, 1,000 <laughs> okay, feet of film. I don't so feel as bad really anymore. Good. I'm yeah, just, I'm really just like a millennial complaining. <laughs> <about it>. <laughs> 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 oh, my two terabytes only gets me 17 minutes. Yeah. And cut. One minute down. Woo! You have 16 more minutes to go, man. <laughs> that was great, but I think we just need something a little more Italian. Wow, it, it actually kind of works. <laughs> So do it again and smolder. Now look at the camera lovingly. Hey, I don't want to do too much walking because of the pool right here. But I didn't realize is you have like a solid couple of feet that you can slide back and forth, which is great because I don't want to walk around too much with all this stuff in the pool. Whoa! That actually Go. scared me, G. When he said that, when he said that, I was like, I wish you got my reaction. I, I was like, <laughs> this range is awesome. Twenty-one to one hundred, and it's pretty lightweight. This is Zeiss T two nine all the way through. But like this range. You can't do this on like a large format. Like I kept putting my tilted nucleus on here and Eric's like keeps ripping it off. It's like, get this off of here. This one's what, the Teradek? RT Motion. RT Motion. I can program all of my lenses into a database in the hand controller. So every time I change lenses, they're already calibrated and it'll be pre-mapped to this. We can put a LiDAR here, it'll autofocus, or it'll tell me on my heads up display here. You know how you guys are always just like, every time we watch your videos, you, you guys wanna buy stuff and I make you guys spend money. That's Eric for me. Every time he's just like, oh, takes the nucleus, rips it off, throws it in the pool. He's like, this is what you need. <laughs> and then you had a cart full of things from a store this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. I got a bunch of monitors coming now. I noticed the write speed is faster on the two terabyte than the one terabyte. So there's certain features that you need the two terabyte codex card for. Right, because they're rated. So you've got two SSD drives and you're writing alternating frames. So while this frame is being you know, written, you can start writing the next one to the next card and you just bounce back and forth. Ah. So that's why you guys make us buy these expensive codex cards. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of data to push through. Mm. And that's also why we went back to the codex drives from you know the CFAS cards. Because with the additional data we're pushing through, we just decided that we wanted to go with something that was rock solid. With the CFAS cards, there were some issues, like people would put tape on them, and there's actually a heat sink on the card. Right, it's, the labels. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. and that is supposed to rest against the side of the, the slot, and there's a little cooling element there that keeps it cool so it doesn't overheat. People would block that, or they'd use a different card that had a heat sink on the wrong spot. We wanted to make these things as foolproof as possible, because you've got enough things to worry about without making sure that every last piece of media is perfect from the right manufacturer. So yeah. we're just trying to simplify things. The anamorphic flare. I guess wow. the fire's pretty cool too. Dude, That's that was sick. <laughs> you guys make me look good. That's what that was like an anime it. finishing move too. The sword turns blue all of a sudden. We can do that in post. Yeah, yeah. we can do that in post. Blue sword, yeah. blue sword. Blue. Craziness doesn't ever stop here, does it? Never a dull moment. <laughs> Actually, one time a bunch of people came and did their taxes here. It was pretty boring. I think one of the coolest parts is that you can just do that and then there's like a stowaway mode where you just yeah and it just stays there that's cool <laughs> you can find it at ready-rig.com ready-rig you couldn't get ready rig we, we without get ready rig. We're like we want to buy it from you and they're like no i guess these uh effects do come into play sometimes huh jeans like when would i ever use that i know right but like this is actually brilliant right here we're getting some good stuff in there it's really yeah. dark so i'm really curious to see how this actually turns up camera speed yep set yeah and action Twenty-five two X anamorphic, so that's kind of like a twelve point five at least width. You see everything. Are you used to just having to wear suits in hot rooms? Yeah, this is the uh, wash and wear collection. <laughs> Have you ever had a shoot where you were filming summer for winter? Oh, oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, it was like freezing, freezing in Toronto. Like always. <laughs> like here's a bathing suit. Yeah, or, or here's nothing. <laughs> so Randall, after seeing what you brought to the table. I think you and I should be partners.
What's awesome is like we came out here afterwards and this wasn't even something that was scheduled in the day, but we're like, totally let's just shoot it. It's yeah. so dark in here. We got blown out windows. In uncontrollable environments when you're kind of just hop in, trying to do your best to catch what you can, this camera makes it look beautiful. You know, it makes your talent look beautiful too. That's consistent with all the other RE cameras. What is going on here? This is not what we came here to shoot. <laughs> That's a wrap. Hey! <laughs> Anything you guys didn't like? It's hard for gimbal stuff. Yeah. It's gonna be so much better once we have the right cable because then we don't have to run the battery on the right, back. Right, right, right. That would be, that's gonna be the, the game changer for this on a Ronin 2. I'm the behind the scenes videographer, not you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, give me that clip. But step hey. off my turf. <laughs> wait, 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 here you go. Okay, give me that clip too. I'd be really interested to see how well we can grade and balance out the shots that we got afterwards where we just had no lighting. Like yeah. when we got right up to Isaiah in front of that window, oh, I was like, yeah. that's super bright, but I, I think there's enough latitude there oh, to where yeah. we can really correct that. We were literally like, oh, time to get out of this location. So we didn't have <laughs> much time to be like, oh, let us correct the exposure. You're in such a rush and you have so many things going on on set that when you get to post, you want to be able to change certain things. And if you can't do that, that's kind of always a bummer. So having that raw capability is, is huge. Well, my favorite thing about the camera is after you shoot for many hours, you start talking in a German accent. That's my number one. <laughs> I didn't know the thing. <laughs> so you know how all cameras look really good during golden hour? It's kind of like the cheat code. But I feel like with the Alexa, the shadows look so good that I love shooting during blue hour. Now starting at EI 2560, I could enter enhanced sensitivity. And if you're like, what the hell is EI? Just think of it as ISO. Enhanced sensitivity mode, kicks in starting at what 25 60 3200 and up to 6400 max frame rate i think i saw 60 frames per second and also your shutter can't be opened longer than 180 degree shutters basically half the time so basically you're capturing the image for a portion of your frame but the other half it's capturing a black frame and then it's studying that black frame to look at the noise and then it subtracts that and uses that as a map to reduce that noise from the other frame. Is that how it's working? Exactly. Is the noise not too different on the second half of that split second, or is it continuous enough? There's always gonna be fluctuations, but I think it fluctuates within a range and you can identify noise within those ranges and then use that as a map. And it does that right there, because that's also another thing that gets baked into the raw, right? Yes, yes, that is baked into the raw. Now we managed to get lost in the middle of the desert. Carrie thinks we should be out looking for water or help i think we have bigger problems like look we're all the way close down at a t22 and look how overexposed we still are well i mean i guess the dynamic range of this lexus is so good that i can still get the data right there is when i start clipping let's just see if i can recover this shot i'm kind of curious i mean even at a t8 but anyways let's do this right so let's go ahead and pop on the built-in nd so we have an nd 0.6 a 1.2 and also a 1.8 so that looks good right around there i think we're about a t10 right here now of course having any built-in nd filters is awesome but i'm still gonna need to throw some up front if i want to go wide open on a day like this so i threw another four stops of nd in the map box and that plus the six that i have on the camera right now now i can go all the way wide open oh my gosh carrie look you found the vent we're saved now the original alexa mini had two four and seven stops instead of the six so on the high density side you were able to open up a little bit more but they went to more of a two four and six so that you get more of a consistent jump every time you throw on an nd now it would have been awesome to be able to leave all this at home but the good thing is if you throw on something like this which is the nd 1.2 then you could go all the way to a t2 and then you still have the incremental adjustments really quickly in camera three nds yeah. Would have liked to see more than just doing combinations, but I get that like we're dealing with a narrow flange depth. Like, right, with the LPL. Fit so much in there, right? Yeah. yeah. So that means I still need to carry a 0.3 so I can get it in the in betweens. Right. I think this is the same NDs you have with the Mini LF. I think yeah. so. There isn't that secondary kickback flare that we normally see, which is that's cool. You can kind of get it right there. There's a bit of a t secondary teal that comes through, but it usually is so much stronger. This is a more true just passing through, hitting the sensor, not coming back and getting on the lens again and coming back. I normally only get to see this on film because film does sort of an okay job of, of almost just accepting the primary and giving very little kickback because of the way that it's just absorbing light. But other cameras have to use glass and sensor glass and NDs and every coating of those adds up to trying to kick something back. I see. Depending on the camera, you do get a certain amount of kickback off of the, the front of the sensor. And Aries always worked really hard to eliminate that and also push it towards blue. Blue tends to have the least impact 
on our sense of brightness. Green flare is really going to grab our attention because green is a lot of what comprises our sense of brightness. It's about 70%. Red is about 22%. Blue is only 8%. So anytime you can make something flare blue, it tends to draw your attention less. So that's why, for example, our signature lenses, uh, we try to push the flares towards blue so that when they show up, they're pretty, but they don't just grab your attention and pull it away from whatever you're looking at. Alex 35, we have improved on the stray light control inside the mount to uh, suppress any stray light that would be picked up. The lens mount is the same universal mount interface that we uh, deployed on the Mini and the Amira and the Mini LF is now on the Alexa 35. Safety first, gotta be seat belted. And then we'll shove this super expensive camera out the door going 85 miles per hour. No, 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 <laughs> 25 miles per hour. 25. Ooh. Oh yeah, colors. Color data, just visually, feels really rich. So you can either maintain that color through the pipeline to post or filter or notch that color as you want. It feels really like you're getting more color than ever before. Yeah. Time for the next mini lesson. So before it was Log C3. Right. We, we would just yes. call it Log C, but it was Log C3. Now it is Log C4. And basically it's designed to accommodate the dynamic range and the more information. ProRes 422HQ and up, it's now gonna be doing 12-bit in ProRes, but now every RAW is 13-bit log. Now it's log, not linear. The, that's exactly <laughs> the face I made when they were like log and linear. So the way it's encoded is very different because internal, it's 18-bit. You have like a container, mm -hmm. and basically when you're recording RAW, you're essentially just measuring the amount of photons that hit the sensor, right? Mm -hmm. The light and that gets put into this package, which is our tequila. Every stop is bigger and bigger. And when you get to the top end, the highlights, that's where almost all the light sits. The top f-stop of dynamic range. It's taking up half our storage space. That's not very efficient. It is the way a sensor works. And if you very linearly encode the values, you digitize the voltages coming off of a sensor, this is what it'll look like. The top stop of dynamic range, you'll almost never hit unless you're just burning out parts of the frame constantly. The next stop down is half of the remaining amount. You get down to somewhere in here, this is where flesh tone is. Now the reason why they go log instead of linear when it comes to the encoding, instead of the highest range of the exposure getting half of the data, each stop gets an equal amount of data. So it's way more useful, especially when you're living in the middle, right? Yeah. Now what Ari told me is that since they're encoding in log, they can fit all the data that they feel like they need to in 13 bits. And it's not a huge amount of storage we're adding, it's just one bit. We could go to 16, we could go to 14, but then it's not gonna be efficient and then you're gonna have a lot more data to push around. And we don't wanna make you suffer any more than we have to. <laughs> While everybody was going to 4K, right, 6K, they stayed at like 3.2K or they stayed at 2K. But no matter what, their original sensor Nobody can match their color. Right, it just looks great. It, right. it looks, they're all about the best picture. And Absolutely. the way they do it, it's brilliant. It's genius. The way they get the best image. It comes down to walking around the building and saying, do you like this picture or do you like this picture? <laughs> and that's literally how they make the most important decisions. We have all these HDR deliverables now, right? right? So we're going into high dynamic range. We're going into Dolby Vision or HDR 10 or whatever. So those are basically log formats. Like if you look at, at HDR or what we call a PQ curve, it's really almost a log curve. Aerial Log C was a lot more like Cineon film, the early days of, you know, when we, when we scanned film. Right. But that was never designed for these super wide gamut, super wide gamma formats. We're moving into an HDR world and that's a lot more in line, a lot more compatible. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. To have a 12 volt two pin is really nice. Well, this has mm. to be 24 volt also. I see that. I mean, my thoughts are I gotta buy all new batteries and they're expensive, but Aerie's right. So. Higher voltage batteries allow for a lot more configurability with devices, right? I'm on board, I'll, I'll do it. This is gonna be shipped with a new mount. Correct, it will ship with the new ARRI B mount, B for battery. And the benefit of that mount is that it is a rigid mechanical interface that is made for 24 volt and you don't have any vibration stemming from the, the mount. There's this tendency to wanna to grab the back of the camera 
and operate the camera that way. <laughs> that doesn't always work so well depending on what the battery mount is. While I was using it, I was getting about one hour for about 100 watt hours. That is correct. It's about 100 watt per hour. So that is 290 watt. So is that almost three hours? Two and a half hours comfortably. So along with this camera, you're releasing an app as well. Because before you would just log into a web browser. You... However, you need to have a session per camera. So you imagine a big desktop, you would have a web window browser for each of the cameras. Here on the tablet, you can have as many cameras as you want on the same browser session uh, in the app and you can call a code you can uh, duplicate settings you can manage the textures and your look files and all of that and you can also monitor the power consumption the remaining time for media you can do all of that essentially the dream for the for the DIT. That's amazing. Even for an AC to even just go in and just check that all the settings are matched. Very cool. That's exciting, actually. What is are happening? You kidding me? Uh, I am being taught how to eat fire right now. Anyways, I think I need to start wrapping this up now. There's still a lot more to talk about, so I might do a part two. If you have any more questions, let me know down there in the comments. But huge shout out to everyone who helped out on this video. Hold on, wait. I just got a text from my wife. <laughs> you better not. No way. way. You better not do it. <laughs> that's oh it. my God, that's going on my reel. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a sensei master. Best in the world. Best in the world. Um, you need the probe lens so you could go in with it. <laughs> you were holding your breath. Right? Yeah. Perfect. If I inhale, will I die? No. Just like it just goes into my lungs it, and I implode. It won't be good. It actually comes out your asshole. <laughs> now that <laughs> is an act on its own. Head back? It is hot. Hot. If for a split second it is hot. Yeah. Thanks for setting all this up, man. Like this is a fun playground you have here. Like, yeah, it's in my backyard in Las Vegas. Great job pulling that focus, Carrie. And now Operating. I'm doing this. I'm well, getting you, a crash been, course. Today. You've been promoted to camera operator now. I've got a couple of questions and I want them answered immediately. Who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> Kindergarten cop. I love that movie. Me too. It's gonna be like the Twilight series movies where it's like, I'm team clarity, I'm team cosmetic. <laughs> it's like, you show up on set with a shirt, you battle somebody. Hi, how tall are you? Six foot seven on a good day. His head's about to hit the top of the door. No, I'm half Filipino, that's the weird part about it. I think we gotta do a Western. We got the tall, the wide, and then the beautiful. No! <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> Come on, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Make me famous, Gene. Oh, okay. <laughs>